Hello, do you want to develop a Quarkus application using CockroachDB as your database? Then this video is for you. Hello, my name is Alex Soto, Director of Developer Experience at Red Hat. And if you want to stay updated with all the content that we are delivering, remember to follow me on Twitter and subscribe to the channel. Okay, let's deploy and create a Quarkus application. To create it, we can go to code.quarkus.io, which helps us to scaffold the application. So the group can be our Geagmi, the artifact, let's change it to development. The build tool can be Maven or Gradle. Let's, uh, let's just stick to Maven. And now we need to pick up all extensions for the application. We are going to use JSONB as a a marshalling on for as a marshalling on marshalling entities then we're going to use open api basically open api allows us to um, document all rest apis using open api spec but the cool thing is that comes with swagger ui which means that we do not need to develop any user interface for this example then we're going to use panache but not the standard panache the panache that uh, here the panache that comes with rest okay so you'll see that it's really easy to implement crud um, application with this extension because it creates all the endpoints or the rest uh, api endpoints automatically for us and finally we need to choose the jdbc driver which uh, in the case of cockroach db is the postgresql driver because there is no cockroach jdbc driver basically cockroach uh, leverage all these uh, connection things to the Postgre um, driver. And that's all, we can generate it. Now the application, now I can go here and I can just move this uh, zip to current directory and then I can unzip it and can go to development and I can start a uh, Visual Studio Code. Of course, you could use any other ID, but in my case, I really like Visual Studio Code, which is, you know, really light and IDE and it works pretty well with Java. Uh, so let's start developing. I'm going to close all these uh, tabs. I'm going to delete this because we don't need, do not need it at all. And let's create our entity. The entity it's a developer. The Java. Uh, it's going to be a class, and this um, entity must uh, extends panache panache entity. Basically, what I'm doing here is just creating a developer entity, implementing the active record pattern. So the developer entity is the one who has the insert, the find, the update, the deletes methods. All of them are implemented here. But also, for example, it contains uh, the auto-generative ID of type long. Then I can just annotate this as an entity. Notice that this entity annotation is comes from JPA, so nothing new. It's the same aspect that we've been using for a long, long time. And then I can create some columns. Let's create the first column, which is uh, my name or the name, basically, and create another column. Notice that this column is again a JPA annotation that it's public int age. I know that some of you might be wondering why I'm using public fields. The reason is that you can do this you can reference on all your code these public fields, but then at compilation time, Quarkus changes this public uh, scope to private and creates getters and setters and change in all your code the field reference to the getters and setters. So we can just you know use the public fields without worrying about the scopes, and Quarkus will take care for us at compilation time. Then we've got our developer entity. Now let's create the rest endpoint for creating, deleting, or finding uh, developers. Let's create a new class called developer resource dot Java. Okay, let's create it. Yeah, and it must be an interface, and this interface must extends panache entity resource. Let me do this a bit smaller okay now and you need to set the uh, entity that is um, baking so it's developer and the id 
the type of the ID of the developer uh, entity, which is long. And that's all. If you check this class, you'll see it's here that implements for us the list method, the get method by ID, the add method, and the date and the delete. So all these operations, all these CRUD operations are implemented <coughs> by default. So um, before we can deploy this, we need to configure the database. Um, to do that, let's use one snippet that comes with um, Quarkus extension for Visual Studio Code, which is this one. Now I can choose a PostgreSQLDBC um, format because remember that CockroachDB uses the PostgreSQL um, uh, driver. Then the DB kind is PostgreSQL. The username is root. Uh, I'm using CockroachDB in insecure mode. So the username is root. There is no password and I can change this to update. So Ibernate um, can uh, create the schemas automatically and notice that I remove it password because in insecure mode there is no password. The last thing before going on, it's changing this port. CockroachDB runs in another port, which is the 26257. And before we can deploy our application, we need to um, take Swagger UI and include it. Basically, I want that Swagger UI be uh, also at a production code. So when we are doing Java menu jar or Docker run or whatever, um, by default, Quarkus disable Swagger UI. Swagger UI only works at dev mode. But if you want to use it at production mode as well, you need to set it always include to true. And now that's all. Let's go to my terminal. Now in my terminal, you can see that I've got here my um, CockroachDB cluster with three nodes, one, two, and three. And here I've got three terminal windows. Each of one has the console to each of the nodes. So this is the node one, this is the node two, and this is the node three. Okay, now let's compile my application. I mean, while I compile the application, let's create a database, that database. Uh, create a database. I think that it was called MyDB. I can just create it. Okay, it says that it already exists. Okay, so I've created it before. That's fine. In fact, if I go here, you can see that uh, the databases I've got here, MyDB, and here I've got my three nodes. Okay, now let's deploy the application. Okay, now what's happening is not defined for the fall. Ah, yeah, I remember that I need to change one thing. It's here, I need to add this GDBC. This is something that has been uh, changed in Quarkus 1.5 that now when you want to specify the URL of the, or the GDBC URL, you need to use the GDBC prefix, which I miss it here, but it's important to notice because in previous version, you didn't, need this prefix and now you need it. So if you find this error, you know why. Um, now, yeah, you can do Java menu jar and then it works. And if I go here, you can see that in databases, I've got my database and you've got, I've got the developer table with, you know, with the age and the name and notice that there is also an ID. This ID comes because of the panache entity. Now we are, here and I'm going to open the Swagger UI. Remember that I added the Open API extension. So now I've got the Swagger UI uh, interface and notice all these REST endpoints that were generated automatically by Panache by using the uh, uh, REST Panache extension. I can get a developer, post a developer, get a developer by ID, put a developer, delete a developer. Let's post a developer. Let's add a new developer. I can just go here, try out. I just Remove this, the age is uh, 39 and the name is Alex. Now I can do execute. I can check here the output. Notice that the Alex has been added. And uh, I think that there was already some developers in the database. So if I go here and I do a tryout and I just getting all the developers and I do an execute, you can see that I can get 
all the developers okay this is one baby free h39 alex is the one that i've added right now now um really easy it it works perfectly fine cobra gb with quarkos in native mode or in jvm mode it works in both cases but one of the great things about um, um, CobraGDB is that it replicates all the data automatically. Notice that I've got three nodes and now I can go to the node one. Notice that here I am in the node one. I can do host name. Okay. And as I'm saying that I am in the Roach one node, I can do a select from my db.developer it's developer and pa -pam -pa -pam because uh, yeah developer oops and notice that i'm saying that the uh, here is alex and now notice that i'm changing to another node this node is the node number two i can do a select again my db dot developer and notice that this exactly the same data but i've just inserted to one and of course if i go to here and I do host name notice that host name is the third node and obviously if i do select from my db developer you can see that the data is replicated automatically to all the cockroach cluster so you can see that cockroach db is your solution your persistent solution for creating real real cloud native applications of course this has been only an introduction but in the next videos we are going to see how to deploy a cockroach db cluster to kubernetes thank you very much and hope to see you again